Hello again, YouTube. I'm back with another video here. In this video here, I kind of show you what I'm what I'm kind of working on uh, with my solar setup. And in here, in this video, I show you some en enhancements that I've made to my overall system. Uh, my goal is to, you know, totally automate this entire setup as much as I can. And unfortunately, yes, it gets it makes it a lot more complicated. Uh, but uh, you know, the thing is, I'm having way too much fun here. So what did, what this is? This is a uh, I think I mentioned this in one of my other videos. This is a Raspberry Pi three. Uh, I'm sorry, no. This is a Raspberry Pi B plus. I also own a Raspberry Pi uh, version three, but this is a B plus uh, because I, I had to use the B plus to utilize uh, an enhancement board. Um, this is the enhancement board right here. This device here that plugs directly into my Raspberry Pi. And this enhancement board is called a Raspicom, a Raspicom, uh, Raspicom board. And what it does is it gives me the ability to control uh, external relays, uh, you know, without additional circuitry um, or building my own circuits uh, with, for the, with the Raspberry Pi. And what it is, it comes with the capability of two outputs. It also comes with uh, standard serial RS, what is this, RS-232 and RS-485 communications. Uh, this is RS-4, uh, the terminal block here, or the terminal connections for RS-485. Uh, and this is the terminal block for uh, RS-232. Up here where you see the uh, red uh, connectors here. Those red connectors are out, actually outputs. That that's actual five volt outputs uh, that comes you know that allows you know comes from the Raspberry Pi. Now those that are may not be familiar with the Raspberry Pi is one of the limitations that the Raspberry Pi has as far as trying to control external relays is the fact that the Raspberry Pi through its GPIOs or what they call the general pur purpose general purpose input output pins. Um, is only limited to 3.3 volts, and that's not enough to drive, ex, you know, ex, uh, uh, external relays. And you have to, in order to drive external relays, you'd have to build your own circuit with transistors and diodes and stuff like that. So as opposed to doing that, I bought the Raspicom, and that allows me to, you know, uh, control those uh, external outputs. Um, also, I purchased this uh, USB to RS-485 converter. Um, now, I tried to use the RS-485 uh, pins on the Raspicom. Unfortunately, I think because they operate in full duplex and this operates in half duplex, um, this allows me to communicate with the device I have it connected to. Uh, so as you can see right here, I mean, it's getting pretty, uh, I won't say complicated, but um, it gives me the ability to do a lot of stuff. And I'm going to show you in a second. Now, the USB to RS-45 converter, this thing only costs like, I don't know, four or five bucks off Amazon. And really cheap. It's only, you know, two wires, uh, two wires. And um, this uh, US, our USB to RS-485 uh, connector is actually connected to my Magnum inverter uh, right underneath, as you can see there. It's just another, this is an RJ11 uh, connector right there, RJ11. And it's only using two pins, okay, uh, pin one and pin four from the RJ11 connector that's uh, connected to my Magnum inverter. And through that, I also receive uh, status information from the Magnum inverter, the exact same information that feeds this, this remote unit, the exact same information. Um, I just have to incorporate it in my code, in my software program. So um, now right now, uh, my obviously my relays are turned off and I'm gonna show you how it works. Um, I created a program in Python uh, where just, it, this is just a test program. And what it is is just, I, I wait for user input and essentially it says enter one to enable uh, controllers, two to disable. So since they're already disabled, I'm just gonna enter two right there. Okay, I entered two, okay, trying to get this camera right here and then I'm gonna hit enter. If you can see my finger. So, uh, okay, well actually they're already disabled so I'm going to hit, I'm, I'm gonna change it to one, excuse me. Okay, so the input is one and I'm gonna hit enter. 
Okay, and there you have it. Okay, so my relays are turned on. Uh, you see the LEDs up on the Raspberry Pi. And so what I'm doing is I'm actually controlling these particular relays that actually control the power input or, you know, coming from the uh, solar panels to my charge controllers. So I have two solid state relays uh, on heat sinks and they're controlling both of my charge controllers. And what that's go what's going to happen is I'm going to program this Raspberry Pi to make a determination based on my uh, battery state of charge whether or not I need both charge controllers on or at least turn the strongest one off and let the weak one or the you know the one with less panels just kind of you know keep uh, keep the system allow the system to stay off grid and uh, keep the batteries topped off. Now, the reason I'm doing this is I discovered that, you know, my, my, uh, my system is, it runs full out. And during the day, uh, I produce so much power that um, I can't use it all. I mean, you know, that's, it, it seems like that's a problem you want to have deal, dealing with solar. But, you know, the thing is, um, with all of that power coming in, even though I got oil inside of my batteries and so forth like that, it still uses it still uses you know quite a bit of water, not from evaporation per se, but because of the fact that there is an electrolysis process going on. And so what I need to do is, as opposed to you know generating you know uh, you know uh, 80, 90, 100 amps or you know something like that. So what I'm going to do is, but I'm going to let the Raspberry Pi say, hey, if it's a if your battery bank is 100 uh, 100 percent state of charge, just simply turn off automatically turn off one of the charge controllers uh, through the solid state relays. And if the let's say for instance the um, the battery state of charge you know uh, drops down to like 95 percent or something like that. Then it says, oh, wait a minute, you're using more power, you're using more power than you bring in, so I'm going to turn on the other charge controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off, I'm going to have this charge controller turn off automatically, um, you know, when it reaches that point, because this is the strongest charge controller, because I have 2,000 watts connected to this one, and I have about 1,400 watts connected to that one. And so I, what I'm going to do is I'll just simply turn it off. And then I'll let the Raspberry Pi make the determination based on my programming. And uh, so, you know, it, it, you know, it'll work out really well. Um, and so, and also with the USB to uh, RS-235 RS converter, um, I'll take the information coming in from the uh, Magnum inverter and incorporate that into my program as well. Um, as far as giving me visual information, you know, over the network, let me know exactly, you know, what's going on uh, as far as power output, uh, power input, and stuff like that. Now, when I had the um, the Snyder Electric Connext uh, inverter charger, that's one of the things I really liked about having the com box um, was the the fact that I can see exactly how much power is being output by my inverter and how much power was coming in from the utility. And uh, when I took that down, I kind of, you know, I kind of missed that capability. So after doing some research, I found out that this thing does transmit information. This Magnum inverter does transmit information to this remote unit, okay, through RS-485. And um, so let me turn off this light, so turn off the glare. So it communicates through RS-485. RS and so if it communicates through RS-485, then I can talk to it and I can bring that information in and I can create some type of interface so that I can see that information as well. Now, the solid state relays, these are industrial solid state relays. Um, they're, you know, uh, very high voltage solid state relays. This relay here can take about, uh, let's see here, you can see, yeah, 400, uh, 400 volts DC at 20 amps. Now, if you look at the data sheet, it says 300 volts, but you can see right there it says 400 volts at 20 amps. Uh, input, it takes uh, between 4 and 32 volts DC. So that's why at 5 volts, uh, this Raspberry Pi that RaspiCom will actually generate uh, a signal, a voltage to turn on that relay at five, just over five volts. I think like 5.5 volts or something like that, or just over five volts. And so that's more than enough to turn on these solid state relays. 
Um, so with this right here, you know, this both of them are high voltage uh, relays. They're you know special purpose relays. Um, they were not they 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 you know they did cost a little bit um, because you know they weren't cheap and plus they're quality relays. If you look on the front, I don't know if you can see it, but there is like a covering on front, a safety covering. And you know this is these are really good relays. If you got to get some solid state relays, look for that brand. It says Crydon, C R Y D O M. Um, if you got to get solid state relays, I would recommend them. Okay, these are Crydon uh, relays. Also, these, as you can see here, are also Crydon uh, Crydon relays as well. So um, when it comes to buying, I bought some other solid state relays, and and they are cheaply, very very cheaply made. Uh, so again, I would recommend that you go with um, with Crydon or Crydon. Now let's see here. Let me let's get out of this particular program, and I'll show you what the uh, what my other program as far as the information I expect to get from the Magnum inverter. Now I wrote another program um, essentially. Uh, it's called go.py and all it is is this is just a, a program to read this the RS45 information um, that's coming from the uh, Magnum inverter so this is just to kind of show you what to what, what I expect to see and uh, you can see right there I'm generating information uh, let me modify the screen here a little bit okay if you look right there you'll see that at the very top, it's generating, uh, the Magnum Inverter is generating 16 bytes of information. And every byte has, uh, you know, tells you something about, the, gives you status information about the inverter. Now, right now, all you can see is a bunch of, you see uh, each one of the bytes is, you know, 0 through 15, which is 16 bytes. And at the very top, you see this, it's a, that's a hexadecimal number, 0 uh, X2, meaning that, um, so that's a hexadecimal representation of what the, what mode the inverter is in. So I have to write a program to decode that information. And I also, I have the documentation for the Magnum inverter that will allow me to do that. And essentially that zero, that hexadecimal number represents float, uh, float mode. Uh, that's what that's saying. And all of the other, uh, you know, all of the other uh, uh, information represents everything that the Magnum Inverter is sending to the remote about itself. Everything, AC input, AC output, uh, DC input, you know, and so forth. So I got to just, uh, just uh, take this information and decode it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, I'm going to put it in, I'm going to put it in my other application so that I can see that information as well. Uh, along with you know uh, information about the controllers, how they're doing, and stuff like that, and all of this is coming through uh, this particular this Raspberry Pi. Now uh, to to program this Raspberry Pi, I utilize a programming language called Python. Python, and um, you know it's it's pretty common for Linux based system, also Windows too. So I use pro, uh, Python to program this thing. And to talk Modbus to this thing, there is also a library, software programming library uh, that comes with the Raspberry Pis and or you could download it for the Raspberry Pi and it's called, it is based on Python and it's called Pi Modbus, P-Y Modbus or P-Y M-O-B, um, uh, I'm sorry, M-O-D-B-U-S, Modbus, Pi Modbus and Python is P-Y-T-H-O-N. So, and that's the programming language. So anyway, um, and I show you this video here, not to, uh, I'm not showing, this is not a tutorial video. I, I don't really like doing tutorial videos and I don't really do a lot of them. Uh, but this is more of a, hey, you know, this is what you can do uh, with your own system if you had the inclination to do so. Um, so with Raspberry Pi, some solid state relays, um, you know, and a little bit of uh, know-how as far as, you know, willingness to do the research. I had to learn to do this. I did not just know just instinctively, hey, oh yeah, I'm gonna get this Raspberry Pi and, and just start programming with it. It took a lot of trial and error and a lot of research, a lot of Googling. I got a couple of books, or, you know, I read through, you know, reference books, reference manuals, and I did it. So if you are so inclined to do the exact same thing, you can do it yourself as well. All right.
thanks a lot YouTube thanks for watching and um, you know if you got a couple comments you know hey you know just put them in I'll try to answer them the best way I can anyway thanks for watching and uh, have a good one take care